I remember thinking like, if I'm gonna be a shepherd, if I'm gonna raise animals for meat, because I think that that is a great thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, the lamb meat is great and it's great to provide that nourishment for the community. Um, but if I'm gonna do that, then I really need to know every step of the process mm -hmm. and I wanna feel good about every step of the process. Welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Sarah Scully, and today with me I have Mary Lake. Hi, Mary. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Uh, Mary is a shearer and a butcher, and we'll talk to her about um, those various roles that she plays in the sheep industry. But I always like to start with how people um, got started. Uh, and so how did you get started in sheep? What was your first entry point? Um, my first job with sheep was working at Knoll Farm in okay. Helen Wybrow yeah. in Faston, Vermont. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I had decided to look for a sheep farm job after mm -hmm. working on a vegetable farm okay. for quite a while. <laughs> I, I remember loving it, you know, and just being like, I want to start working with animals too and mm -hmm. um, see that side of agriculture. Yep. I was going to say the animals, were, uh, the uh, vegetables weren't enough trouble for you. They didn't like try to get out of the fence or eat things they weren't supposed to. So no, you had, no, no, no. <laughs> you had to go for the animal side. That's really cool. Yeah. Cool. So you started farming with her and then um, at some point you took what I consider a very brave step um, and to go into um, butchering and learning mm -hmm. that trade. So yeah. what was your prompt for that? Um, well, with Helen, we were, I was her apprentice and okay. I kind of designed this like curriculum for myself because I really wanted to just really wrap my head and my skills around mm -hmm. shepherding mm -hmm. and so shearing was a part of it butchering was a part of it um spinning and uh some other fiber arts like knitting and weaving were a part of it mm -hmm. and um so what I had I did with her was like I was like her right hand woman for a lot of of the mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. and she would send me out to do certain tasks to kind of expose me to life as a shepherd and one of them was uh bringing the lambs to the slaughterhouse mm -hmm. um during for the fall harvest mm -hmm. and um so I brought them to a slaughterhouse that later that day got shut shut down for inhumane handling oh that's really too bad yeah yeah it mm -hmm. was a, and it was pretty scary it mm -hmm. was just like I just felt really just felt really horrible that I had dropped animals off and I had no clue that anything bad was going on. Mm -hmm. And I felt kind of naive. And I remember thinking like, if I'm going to be a shepherd, if I'm going to raise animals for meat, because I think that that is a great thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, the lamb meat is great and it's great to provide that nourishment for the community. Um, but if I'm going to do that, then I really need to know every step of the process mm -hmm. and I want to feel good about every step of the process. Yeah. And I thought like it was possible to feel good about slaughter. Mm -hmm. And I kind of wanted to see if that was true. Right. And I had asked um, other farmers in my community at that point. So I was living in Waitsfield and there's some great meat producers in the Waitsfield area. Mm -hmm. And I asked them all who they used for their slaughter and processing and, um, and also who they trusted, and, which is kind of an interesting question mm -hmm. when you ask, like, what slaughterhouse right. do you trust? There's kind of this uh, relationship between producers and processors that's a little rough around the edges. Yeah, it can be. I find <laughs> yeah. that, you know, it, it can be tricky. On one hand, it's hard to want to know that's why I really applaud you because it's hard to want to know what's going on. It's, yeah. It seems almost easier to turn a blind eye, but at the same time, if you spent an entire season or, you know, we, sometimes we've taken mature use to the slaughterhouse. So, you know, you spent several years getting to know an mm -hmm. animal. You want to make sure that A to Z, their life was really well honored and very well taken care of and that they had a quick and painless death. Yeah. And so, you know, I think, I think for anybody, whether you're processing chickens on your own or you're taking cattle to market or whatever it is, you know, kind of girding yourself and at least getting a tour of the slaughterhouse and meeting the people that are involved is really, mm -hmm. really important. So yeah. I, I applaud you for going that extra step. Well, so, thank you. Yeah. So then you got your job at Royal, right? Yeah. yeah. So a lot of the farmers said, oh, the Royal Butcher, which mm -hmm. was luckily the closest slaughterhouse mm -hmm. too. So mm -hmm. um, I went there and just asked for a job and was pretty frank that mm -hmm. I had no experience <laughs> and that I loved sheep 
And so um, the manager at the time did kind of laugh at me. Right. <laughs> and was like, well, why don't you come in Monday mm-hmm. and try it out? And we'll just see how you do. Right. And um, and so I came back that Monday, and they, they did put a knife in my hand. Mm-hmm. And um, I was the person who kind of got all the extra meat off of the bones. Mm-hmm. Um, we were cutting beef that day. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and then I just kept coming back, and they kept letting me come back, and they started to pay me. So yeah. It worked out yeah. well. And then it didn't take long, so I started in the cutting room, but mm-hmm. I was always kind of peeking onto the kill floor because that was what I was really interested in, was that transition from uh, being a live animal to um, a product for consumption mm-hmm. and being going from um, being sensible to insensible. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, so they could see that I kept kind of peeking out there. Mm-hmm. I was that asking you were questions, away from it. Yeah. And, there, yeah. and then a position opened up out there on right. the floor. So mm-hmm. then I was able to be a part of that. Mm-hmm. And from there, it just it was um, a pretty great journey where we, the owner of the Royal Butcher, Royal Larock, and I both kind of got really into um, learning about Temple Grandin, mm-hmm. and she ended up just being like a great source of information for us right on how to handle animals right. and he had like she, previous she's done work. a lot of i think a lot of consulting work for the meat industry in general yeah written yeah. papers and guidelines mm-hmm. kind of for for uh ethical animal handling yeah she right. relates like her autism to how um animals feel mm-hmm. like uh, loud noises or contrasts in colors and um, and mm-hmm. how they would like to be touched, mm-hmm. to, to be moved. Mm-hmm. And before I got there, Royal had um, redesigned his animal handling mm-hmm. system in his barn mm-hmm. um, to her kind of standards. Right, right. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. And so you worked there for a number of years, and now yep. you do more on-farm slaughtering yeah. for people, um, which I think is a great way to go. It's very tricky, um, you know, it, it Laws may vary by your state. In Vermont, you can do it. Um, but I can't remember what the exact... Is it only for your own consumption? No, there's a slaughter animals? exemption law um, that you can sell animals slaughtered on the farm if you sell that whole animal to mm-hmm. one consumer. Right. Which is pretty hard for beef and sometimes for pork to find someone who's willing to buy a whole beef and put right. that whole thing a in A thousand there. pounds of meat or something. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Put that in their chest freezer. Right. With lambs and goats, it works out really well. Right. Because... A lamb and a goat, they're, that's a, not too much meat, right. but a good amount of meat, and sure, it's a great way to fill your freezer up for yep. a year. Yeah, and I did, um, we did a CSA share um, when we had culls, and we would sell, you know, just seven or eight um, or so, but we, that worked out really well for us. Mm-hmm. You know, people were happy to get buy in bulk and get all the parts um, and use up the whole animal and yeah. and get a deal on the on the price of the meat because it yeah. was a good deal. Yeah. Um, it, it's been really fun actually because I'm mm-hmm. I'm called an itinerant slaughterer, which mm-hmm. is like a slaughterer who travels from farm to farm, mm-hmm. and um, slaughtering animals in front of the producers mm-hmm. is kind of interesting because they have that connection to the animal. Mm-hmm. Um, but once we've gotten through that part where the the slaughter the has happened and the animal is mm-hmm. dead and not feeling anything. Mm-hmm. It's been interesting to see producers, they can switch, and now they're really interested. They're like, well, let's take a look on the inside. Let's look at that liver and see right. if there's parasite damage, and let's look at the fat and see how yep. what the condition was really like under that skin, mm-hmm. and it gets pretty interesting. Right. Yeah, and I was always one of those kids, and I was just like, oh, you don't want to dissect your frog in biology class? I'll do it for you, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I haven't been witness to a sheep slaughter um, yeah. yet, but I... I it's, wasn't one of those it's kids, on, but It's on my list. This it's definitely on my list to do it. Um, the closest sure. I've gotten is that meat class you and I took a few years ago, mm-hmm. where we had someone from Royal... Um, who explained kind of what the what the supervision process is for the licensing that they have to undergo? Mm-hmm. Uh, you have an inspector who's standing over you, watching cut up, watching you cut up meat, mm-hmm. and they had they didn't do a slaughter there, but they had a, a whole carcass that they had slaughtered that morning, and he talked about the cuts and actually was breaking down this animal uh, right there, which yeah. I, which was you know really informative um, as a cook too, just yeah. to, to say okay, I can ask for this cut. For this kind of application, for this kind of a dish, 
Or I can take that same part and cut it a different way mm -hmm. for something else. Um, yeah. So that was really informative. Yeah. yeah. With the Vermont Sheep and Goat Association, we've done some uh, cutting demos to mm -hmm. help producers sell their lamb. Mm -hmm. And like, like a leg of lamb, once you see how you can break that leg of lamb down into different muscles and make all these different smaller cuts from a large, mm -hmm. larger portion, mm -hmm. it's a little bit easier to sell it. Cause right. You can say, oh, you should get this like lamb because it's got a little bit of this. It's got the sirloin, a little bit of the tenderloin. It's mm -hmm. got the top round and the bottom round and all these muscle groups that you can kind of pull out and cut into little cutlets. Right. And yeah. And for the for that consumer who's looking for that fresh farm product, they're going to be really motivated to like really learn how to cook it to its best advantage. Yeah. They're going to want those recipes and, and all that stuff. So that's a great conversation to have with, mm -hmm. your, with your customer, too. Oh, yeah, that's really cool. And then the other side of your business um, is shearing. And Mary's actually kind enough. We have one Navajo churro sheep who really needs to be shorn in the in twice a year. Um, and I, I often skip the fall shearing on her, but Mary's going to shear her. So we'll show you some footage of that uh, when we get down to the barn in a little while. Um, but how did shearing uh, come about? You said you wanted to just learn all the different skills. Um, yeah, so that how, was part of that apprenticeship. Learn? Um, well, uh, Jim McRae, who's mm -hmm. a really well-known shearer mm -hmm. in the state, he um, sheared the sheep that year at Knoll Farm and um, told me about the class that he teaches at Shelburne Farms. Mm -hmm. so he teaches a shearing class every spring, and um, he kind of was like, you should sign up for it. So I did, mm -hmm. and um, I think, you know, I just sheared one sheep that day, mm -hmm. and I was pumped that I got that done. <laughs> And I like couldn't walk for two days. Right. But um, but afterwards I was like, oh man, that was this great combination of being gentle mm -hmm. and strong mm -hmm. and um, which is kind of a motif in all the things that I do. I was like, you have to be those two things a lot of the time mm -hmm. and they they're kind of contradictory, but um yeah. So with the shearing, uh, yeah, and I was like, and you have to have endurance for it. Mm -hmm. And I was also like, I feel like my body is built to do this, where mm -hmm. I haven't felt like that about a lot of things. That's interesting. And so, yeah, because you're kind of tall, and um, Mary hasn't actually shorn for us before. We we ended up getting going with our shearer who our sheep mentor had in place, so that was just kind of a natural, like, oh, just use this person. But she's really tall and limber, too. So yeah, it's, and it's like long arms. Yeah, I use my feet, yeah. really strong legs, mm -hmm. and um, so it made me feel good about my body. Right, and as same with even butchering did too because mm -hmm. it's never fun to butcher out the real skinny animals. Yeah, <laughs> and having nice body condition and that little layer of fat on the fat top. is yep. just mm -hmm. makes me feel a lot better about <laughs> my body. Right, <laughs> sure. Yeah, when so. you can see what's going on inside. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm healthy. That's what I yeah, am. Yeah, so it's a very good, good conditioned <laughs> yep. animal right here. That's right. <laughs> and uh, so I felt like it could be a match. I never thought that I would make money doing it. Mm. I was always like, oh, this will just be some little side thing I do. Mm -hmm. um, and after I had sheared for a couple of years, like, so after that class, I took one other class that was for two days. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, I put a poster up saying, I'm learning how to shear, mm -hmm. call me. Mm -hmm. And um, the first person called me. She paid me $25 a sheep. Yeah. Yep. There were only four. Yeah. And it took me all day to do all four. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but, and I was like, okay, I'm starting to get this. Mm -hmm. And um, so I did that for about a year, just taking a couple small jobs here and there. Mm -hmm. And then took a, lar a longer shearing course out in Washington State. Mm -hmm. That was a week long. Because the... Um, shearing is like this dance with specific positions and steps. Right. And Every stroke has a move, and they're always mm -hmm. done in the same. You learn a pattern, right? A pattern, yeah. exactly. And yeah. it takes the fleece off all in one piece, and it also stretches the sheep out so I'm not shearing into wrinkles and mm -hmm. kind of stretching the skin out. Right. And um, it took a while for me to really memorize where my feet were going and my arms were going mm -hmm. and to coordinate all that. Um, and after that Washington State course, I was like, I got this. And yeah. I came home and I really put my name out there. Mm -hmm. And like maybe a year after that, um, it was Jim McRae again who was like, why don't you take that next step and 
Mm -hmm. see if you can actually make a living doing it. Right. Because this he does in combination with um, another small business. Mm -hmm. And so then I was like, well, it does match up well with butchering because the busiest time of year for butchering is the fall. Mm -hmm. And the busiest time for shearing is spring. Yeah. And they both overlap nicely Mm -hmm. in the off seasons. So, um, yeah, that worked out really well. And when I was working at the Royal Butcher full time, uh, it was really hard to fit all the shearing in. I was mm-hmm. like shearing all weekend and then evenings after work. And then, wow. um, but yeah. then when I got pregnant, I was like, okay, well now I can kind of leave my full time job. <laughs> I have a really good excuse. <laughs> I have a really good excuse to now just shear full time. <laughs> right. And, yeah. and then I could design, you know, like make my own schedule and mm-hmm. it was much more flexible and, and since then, um, it's been great. Yeah. But every year is better than the year before. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That's great. Mm-hmm. And there's a dearth of um, both slaughterhouses and professional shearers in this country, um, and even still in Vermont. I mean, I know that, you know I can name a handful of shearers, but there's always people on the listserv. There's always neighbors of mine calling mm-hmm. going, I haven't been able to get so-and-so to call me back. Do you know of another shearer who's going to be available? And so, you know, if you're interested in any of these careers, I would say, um, you know, look into them and and see if you can find a mentor to apprentice with in your area because I think it is a good living. If you like animals, if you like working outside, if you like driving, if you like travel. (laughs) Some people are just not office people and they need these things. They need fresh air and sunshine and, you know, podcasts in the car or whatever it is. Um, uh, and you get to meet, you know, meet cool oh, people, yeah. and I'm sure have all kinds great of great animals conversations, yeah. and, and check out all the different breeds, and mm-hmm. you know, learn about all kinds of mm-hmm. animal related stuff. So, um, yeah, I think it's a really cool, really cool thing. Yeah, the best part about the job is, I mean, when I sit the sheep down mm-hmm. before I start shearing it, I'm kind of cradling the sheep and kind of mm-hmm. giving it this nice hug. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's like such a great perk that I get to <laughs> snuggle <laughs> with. Cute sheep every day. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. Um, and then you, you mentioned your spinning and your, you know, your fiber work. So how's that going? Is that just something you do for fun or? Yeah. It's like. Or to learn more about fleece or. Yep. And it's kind of on the back burner right now. I have mm-hmm. two little kids. So I have a yep. three-year-old and a 10-month-old. Mm-hmm. Um, so spinning doesn't happen mm-hmm. <laughs> right now. That looks interesting. Yeah. <laughs> my hand in there no no that's not so good <laughs> so I've got my spinning wheel and yeah. I managed to, to do a little bit every year uh-huh. um but I have a flock of about 30 sheep mm-hmm. and um I sell they're Icelandic and Dorset and Finn and Shetland and crosses of all of those mm-hmm. and so I have some pretty good uh, hand spinning fleeces and nice. we make a yarn and um like right now my mother-in-law and I are really into natural dyeing mm-hmm. so we have been using plants from the farm to uh dye with yeah we had a lot of fun this year we kind of came up with this line of colors that we called um the shepherd's revenge oh nice <laughs> it's, it's using uh, we have like a knotweed a japanese knotweed right. yarn uh the chervil uh-huh. a burdock root right all, all the <laughs> things that you don't want growing in your yeah. pasture because they either well the knotweed cra- crowds out other stuff the burdock will ruin a fleece mm-hmm. with all the little sticky seed balls that they make so yeah, yeah that's mm-hmm. a really good shepherd's revenge yeah you know, so i really like, like that m- clean mow these and use them for something else that's a good yeah. way to get rid of stuff yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> Yep, so that's been really cool. beautiful and fun. And um, and then my mom likes to knit, so she's been knitting with our yarn, nice. like little baby sweaters, and we sell those yeah. and the lamb um, and the yarn at farmer's markets and sheepskins. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Yeah, good. Well, thanks for coming in today. Yeah, it was great to learn you. more about what you've been doing. And uh, we'll post links to all of Mary's uh, enterprises on the show notes for this uh, for this episode. Of course, you can find more information about her. Uh, Mary will also be at the Sheep and Wool Festival coming up, the Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival coming up at the end of September. So we'll put another link to that. And if you're in the area or if you're traveling up here for a vacation, come check it out. It's a great show. Mm, it so, is. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> great. Thanks again for joining us and tune in next time for more agricultural stories. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>